General Washington will defer to Mr. Hamilton as he always has. The result will be a provocation of the most immense order. Oh, surely you and I, Thomas, can rise above the din of politics. Nowhere is the din of politics greater than in your own cabinet, which you have inherited from Washington without making a single change. You're Hamilton's man. And you, sirs, are subservient to Hamilton. Who ruled General Washington and would rule me if he could. I protest. Mr. Jefferson, whom you despise, is an infinitely better man. I would rather be vice president under him or resident minister to the Barbary pirates than be indebted to a creature such as Hamilton for my present post. Um, if you can be as blind to Mr. Hamilton's scheming as you seem. I am no man's puppet, Thomas. Mr. Hamilton would have us British in our economy, British in our forms of government. British, John. In all but name. He believes that man can be governed only by force and self-interest. The first is unavailable to him at present. So he appeals to our baser instincts, fear and greed. A national army binds the country much as a national bank does. Well, training people, bringing his left eye in line with the buttons of his waistcoat and his right eye looking along the breasts of the soldiers to his right. Mr. Hamilton. Well, I am <laughs> I'm very sorry to intrude upon your affairs. Mr. Reynolds, will you not join me at table? I have made a more reasonable company. Dream of empire, Mr. Hamilton. You question my loyalty, sir. Oh, no, Mr. Hamilton, I question your sanity. Now, either you are stuck raving mad, or I am! <laughs>